Good morning, hello, and welcome back to So What If I Sew It, or welcome if you're new. My name is Jess, and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking, and all things stitch related. And today we are back with a sew along. So the plan is we are going to make the, what are they, paper theory, I want to say? Yes, paper theory Agnes pajamas. Here they are in all of their glory. I'm gonna make this intro nice and short so we can get on to some sewing. So I'm gonna be making this view actually that's shown. There is also a trouser view, which if I like the whole cut and everything, I will probably make as well. Um, but we are gonna be making the shorter version because I am desperate for some comfortable short pajamas that have got a bit more of a top on them and that are fully cotton because it is really muggy at the moment. It's hot. Sorry, I'm not used to my fringe yet. Um, any of you who watched last week will know I have a fringe now. It's fun. I haven't had a fringe since I was 14. So my brain is not quite, I keep thinking, oh my God, what's in my eyes? But no, it's my hands. fine. It's meant to be that. Um, anyway, <laughs> sorry guys. So one thing I wanted to draw your attention to is the number of measurements on the back. So we have body measurements, size measurements for the top, size measurements for the bottoms, totaled fabric usage. Now, what's really interesting is if I go by the size measurements on the body, I'm a size 10. So that's because of her pajamas, obviously not wearing a bra on that. So 34 and a half, 27 waist, 37 hip, fine. However, there is a lot of ease. So when we go down to the shirt, the 10 is a 45 inch bust, obviously, because it's a nice big, um, like a bat wing. Then we have a 45 inch waist, again, large frame, um, like as in it's a boxy pattern. And the hip is 43, although that doesn't matter because it's a shirt. And then if you go down to the trouser measurement, the size 10 is a 39 inch waist and a 43 inch hip. So we're not doing that. That's not gonna happen. I think I'm gonna make a size six. So, that would be in the shirt, a 42 inch top, which I think is probably going to be fine. Um, and then a for the for the um, trousers, can't remember the word trousers, 36 and a half inch waist, perfect. I mean, realistically, I'm what? I have a, like a 26 inch waist. So that's really, I assume as small as that's going to get really. I, I suppose it is stretched though. I oh, know it does actually say stretched. So it's a 36 inch waist stretched but obviously with the elastic that I'll pull it in. So we'll make a size six and then the hip is 39, which is fine. We're, we're good with that, that's cool. My fringe is parting this morning because I haven't dried it properly. So that's fun. It may change over the course of the video. Um, And then overall it says I'm going to need, if I use 115 centimeter wide fabric, I'm gonna need four meters in total to make a size six. If it's 150 centimeters, I only need two and a half which is hilarious because yeah, I mean, makes complete sense to be fair. So I'm gonna make his size six because I just think that's gonna work better for me and my body. I don't want them, I want it baggy enough that it's comfortable but not so baggy that I'm drowning and it moves around on me in my sleep because that's gonna annoy me. Um, I've never actually used a paper theory pattern before, ever. So I'm quite excited to see what happens. I am, as I do this, thinking about the fact of whether I have any buttons and whether I have any elastic. I, oh, I must have some, I must have enough, it'll be fine. We'll figure it out. No, no, I do, I must do, I must do. And if not, I can get some buttons, that's not the end of the world. Uh, but I don't want to buy any fabric or any notions if I can help it, because as you guys know, I'm on a thrifty sewing kick till the end of the, well, realistically for the next four years, because as a PhD, I'm never gonna be exactly flush. However, I want to embrace thrifty sewing from now. So we are reusing stuff, we are working to the end of things, we're using every scrap of interfacing we own. Um, if they're pajamas and this much buttons look cute, we're gonna do that instead of buying new buttons. Um, and I, if you've watched my fabric haul from last week, or well, not fabric haul, my sewing plans chatty catch up with some fabric in it, you will know that I have got the most incredible project coming up, which means that, yeah, I'm not allowed to buy any fabric for the rest of the year at all. Oh God, that's not gonna go well, but it's fine. You guys are gonna keep me accountable. We're not gonna buy any fabric. Even when we see people going to the knitting and stitching show to buy fabric, I'm gonna go this year as well, um, but I'm not gonna buy anything. Or I might literally get out enough cash for like 20 quid or something and give me that as a spending budget. I don't know, we're gonna figure it out. But anyway, 50 sewing vibes, rule all. Now, fabric. 
We are go, go, go this morning because I want to get on with the sewing, which I'm sure you guys want me to do as well, to be honest. Here it is. So this is my fabulous, it is a cotton, I think it's a cotton lawn. I want it because it's very, very smooth and very soft. Might be a poplin though. It is, it is a type of cotton. I'm pretty sure it's cotton lawn. I got it, I have like three metres of it because I got it as a remnant, it's like 3.1 metres. And I literally, I bought it last year and I was like, I cannot let this go by. I love it. I am gonna make pajamas out of it. But when, I do not know. So I'm gonna hold it up. They're like little daisies, but they also look a little bit like suns from a distance. I love this, this fabric, honestly. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, it's very soft. It is 100% cotton and it's got enough structure. This is what I was thinking. It's got enough structure to make the shirt really well. So like, I will have points on my collar. I will have, you know, like it's it's going to, when you're making something with a shirt, it's hard because you, you don't want it to be super constructed, but at the same time, you need a fabric that can crease and that will press and that will work with the techniques that you have to be able to use. So I'm really excited to work with this. This fabric was bought, I want to say, Stitch and Ink. I, I want to say I got it from Stitch and Ink because she had a certain amount left and I said, please, can I have it? And she said, absolutely. It's like 2.8 meters, just take it and go. So, all right, I did buy it, I should say, but uh, Alicia was fantastic. I feel like that's where I got it from. Um, but I'm really excited to use it. Apart from anything, it's been taking up a lot of space in my stash. So I'm quite excited to see it become a thing as well. And if I love it, and if there's enough left, because I am quite sure, um, I might make matching pajama bottoms as well, so I can use the top all year round and then just change out for shorts or trousers. Might do that, could be quite fun. Anyway, so we're gonna kick off with some sewing. Please ignore the absolute mess behind me. I am still fully in the midst of pattern testing, which means I can't tell you guys what I'm working on. However, I'm so excited to show you what I'm working on when it's done, because it's all beautiful and oh, it's gonna be great. Can't wait. Um, things I want you guys to know for this sew along. So we are going to be, I know in the past, some of my sew alongs, I'm quite bad for just cracking on with stuff and forgetting to tell you guys about it. So I am gonna be as good as possible with explaining every step. I'm also gonna try and do a few more voiceovers like I did last time, because I think that's quite a good way of making sure if I, if I am just not sure what to say in the moment and I need to get on with something, I can go back and I can tell you guys exactly what I'm doing. So if you'd like that, please let me know in the comments below. Um, and let me know what your favourite pyjama pattern is as well, because I love, for me, up till now, there's been a simplicity pattern I've just used for everything. Whereas I think this might be, I've heard a lot of really good things about how the shorts particularly are drafted. So this might be a new love for me. But let me know in the comments below what your favourite pyjama patterns are. Now, let's, let's kick off. Let's get going. Okay, so first question, I've laid out the three very large pattern pieces like the sheets. I'm going to cut them out straight from the thing because it's for me. Um, first thing is, what does, what do we think, cut one pair self means? I mean, I'm assuming one pair, like for the trousers, just means one out of each layer, as you would usually. Fine. However, it also says it, again, for the top, I'm assuming it means cut two. But it says it for the back as well, which I would expect it to be cut on the fold. But I mean, I guess we're stitching together the back, fine. But one pair self seems very odd language. Like surely it would just be cut two. And also self, like who else would be cutting it? Um, but I don't know if that's a difference in language. Love the seam allowance notches, love saying where they go. That's really good. Love the pattern key. Um, as always, I do prefer a color pattern key because I do think it's clearer. However, we're looking good. And obviously I'm not gonna cut the shorts line, I'm just gonna fold it at that. And then I'll, I'll do that wee bit myself. Um, because, well, yeah, um, I don't wanna lose the ability to make the trousers. But you know, it's looking good otherwise. Um, three, three very big pieces and, which will result in like six. A pocket, collar stand, and then somewhere about there is the facing as well. Oh no, that's just the collar. In my head, it was a collar stand because of the shape of it. So there is no collar stand. So it's just straight onto the neck, which actually, lovely. Again, a much more relaxed fit. Sorry guys, I'm moving this camera around like nobody's business. Um, 
to be fair though to begin with i'm impressed i like already the shape of the shorts i like the way that they like the rise they have at the back a lot of shorts do seem to have less of a visible rise and i think with pajama bottoms you want it to be really really comfortable so we'll see how we go but i am very excited After a little break, um, because life really, I've now finished work full time, hooray! Um, so I can actually do some sewing. Right, we have all of our pieces in this bag. So I'm gonna get the instructions out first. Look at me be good reading the instructions, guys. Be proud of me. Um, you all know how I have a small hatred of instructions. Not for any specific reason, just because oh, I have to read them. Um, so everything is cut out one thing to note from the um time lapse you will have just watched me cutting out is that you may not be able to cut out depending on the amount of fabric you have you may not be able to cut out two layers at the top to get like together um you sort of have to flip them around i found to make sure you had enough space because of the, the amount of space the arm takes up because you don't have a separate sleeve space so just a sleeve space sleeve piece so do bear that in mind so step one we are joining the back together at the middle seams with a half inch seam allowance they've gone very specific of 1.25 centimeters i don't think anyone has a measurement for that so we're gonna just go with five um just over <sighs> guys i cannot speak today i'm so tired but i'm so happy to be sewing so do bear with i'm probably gonna um, misspeak quite a lot today um, so I'm just going to use a one and a half seam allowance because I don't see how 0.25 of a centimetre can make that much of a difference in pyjamas. So I'm going with a one and a half, but if you want to be good, it's a half inch seam allowance. So we're joining that down the back, then overlocking, zigzagging or pressing. This can also be French seam. I'm going to French seam that actually because I really don't want to have to get the overlocker out. I don't really have space for them. I can get them both next to each other, but... I don't know if I, uh, maybe I should overlock actually because they're going to be pyjamas. Okay, okay, I will. I will get the overlocker out. I will clear this half of the desk. I'll get the overlocker out and we can have both by both. But I'm not going to overlock until later on. So I'm going to do, it's step one, back seam. Ooh, step 2A, then we do the pockets. So turning in the top edge, folding in the sides, and then step 2B is bang it on. Um, step 3, we then put the front on the front. I'm actually going to do the pockets later on. I'm, I want the whole top constructed so I can see how it is. I can overlock everything and then we can come back to the pockets. But I'd rather do that, overlock, pockets, collar, and then the shorts although part of my brain is thinking could we just construct the shorts at the same time this is why i don't read instructions because i don't work in the same order oh yeah no okay so it wants me to make the whole top and then there's a whole separate bit of construction for the shorts will i be good or will i just do it how i want to do it i think we all know the answer to that Mm, no because i need to then overlock these bits as well okay we're gonna do we're gonna construct the top we're gonna construct so we're gonna construct the top get the overlocker out construct the shorts as well this is why when i do a sew along it is not a tutorial because this is how my brain works um construct the top construct get the overlocker out construct the shorts overlock everything that needs to be overlocked overlocker goes away then collar, then onto the collar, then facing, we'll overlock the facing while it's here because it only needs to do the raw edge. Um, so that can go on, probably do the pockets last. And then there's a slightly confusing bit with the lapel that we will, oh, that's clever. Ooh, 
okay. I'm quite excited to show you guys this once I've figured it out in my head. Um, fine. Okay. Right. Let's do what I've just said we're going to do. So top, shorts, overlock route, finish off everything, come back, do all the complicated bits. That's the idea. So I'm going to pop you on time lapse while I do all the raw edges because who cares about raw edge really. Um, and then I will meet back with what I have come up with. Okay, so had a small overlocker issue, don't know what happened there, but in taking it off the machine, it has ripped a big hole in the shorts, which is so, so frustrating. So let's have a look at how bad it is. I think it's right across the, yeah, it is. It's right across there. That's how bad it is. So we're going to have a look and see if that is patchable. I do have enough of the fabric to cut out a second pair if I need to. My overlocker is not really behaving today. I don't know what's going on. Oh, it's at the front as well. If it was at the back, I probably could have done something about it. Um, <sighs> that's frustrating. I don't really want to do any more if I can just cut them out again, but also it's wasteful because I'd like to be able to cut out the trousers as well. Maybe I could try... I'll try stitching it up and see what happens. Right, folks, so we're going to make our collar. You can't see my face because I thought it was more important than you see the pattern piece. So here we are. To me, it looks like a collar stamp is the collar. Now, first of all, we have three notches on the bottom here. We need to make sure we clip. So one, two, three. Lovely. So the next step is that we're going to stitch these together in the usual way, grade it down, trim it and flip it through. I know that sounds like such an easy step, doesn't it? So, put the collar there. Right. So, as well, there's quite a few, like the steps are numbered 4A, 4B, 4C, and then there's a note. So apparently I need to interface one collar piece, which is actually why I'm here, but I completely forgot to do that. So let's pick one. And we'll do this one. Uh, where is the interface? Uh, this one down here. Uh, no, no. Mm, yeah, that'll do. And at that point, I think everyone gets to with interfacing where I've only got scraps. I don't really want to use big pieces unless I have to. What have we got? Does that pretty much fit? Go diagonally, maybe? Because I don't want to get a whole new sheet out if it's just for this. Especially, again, it's it's a pair of pyjamas, like, I think I'll probably forgive myself if the collar isn't perfect. Um, as in, like, perfectly interfaced and stable and everything. Um, right, so we are going to, yeah, we're just going to cut a section off, really, and interface it, just so it's got a little bit more body than the one underneath. Again, this, this right here is the reason I don't do sew-alongs. Um, oh, sorry, I don't do sew-alongs, I don't do tutorials, I absolutely do sew-alongs. Um, but I do worry when I do them that, well, I want to make sure people know it's not a tutorial. It's how I am interpreting the pattern, which, you know, might be wrong, to be fair. Like, we've all been there before where you look at instructions, you know, you, what is happening? And really, it's more about my experience sewing it and hopefully keeping you guys company, because there's a good chance the issues I'm having other people will have too. And it's just, I think sometimes I love watching a sew along where it's not like, here's a perfect tutorial. It's, I'm pretty sure this is what we have to do, but let's give it a go and find out. Like right now, I see no point at all in tracing. Like if this was a blazer, I would be tracing it perfectly. I would make sure I had everything. It would have all been done before. 
but I really don't see a point for this type of hat. Like, it's pyjamas. Yes, it has a collar, but it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't work properly. Um, yeah, I was right. There we go. I think that's as close to interface as we're going to get. Actually, that's not bad. Okay. So we're interfacing this and then we're stitching it together with a one centimetre seam allowance specified quite specifically. So we will do that. I mean, specifies that specifically is not only a tautology, it's a polyptone. Um, nice little Easter egg there for anybody else who did A-level Latin. Um, so we're going to go face to face, right size round. We're stitching from edge round to edge. So actually when I look at it, we have, where are our notches here? One, our middle one is there. Our end one is tiny, 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 but there it is. So we have our three um, notches with the long kind of outer edge of the column, the sort of more curved bits going underneath. So we're gonna stitch around this top edge here basically down to there's like a quite a distinct side so we're stitching down to here we're not touching the bottom currently then we're going to grade it and trim it flip it through press it and then we are going to be snipping into here more to turn part of it up so that we can attach it to the top of the pajamas so i'm going to turn you around we're going to use the sewing machine then we're going to pop back stitched them together and then I've trimmed what's going to be my under collar. I kept the interface side as the top collar just because um, it's easier for me to remember which switch. We've trimmed down the under collar and then what we're going to do now is we're going to clip the remaining bit of the rounded corner from the main seam. Um, sorry I'm getting a bit breathless guys. Um, so we're going to clip that I mean, it doesn't really clip into it. It more sort of just, we're just reducing the bulk. So we're gonna start from back here. we we'll just take the corners off like that. Oh, lovely, and then the other side, nice. lovely okay so we now end up with something that looks kind of weird and like this then we turn it through to the right side and we press so let's ping it through Ooh. now what i've done there is classic is uh i have trimmed through i've popped through the seam by accident so we're just going to fix that So when you trim the corners, do make sure it shows you're going really close to the seams, but just remember what your fabric is like as well. Because like this, I've discovered this fabric rips quite easily. Like it's lovely, good quality cotton, but it does rip easily. So then when I turn it through, I will remember that. It's going to end up a little bit lumpy, but again, it's pyjamas. It's not the end of the world. Lovely. And I've not done it on the other side, so we're all good. It's just one side. Now we're going to press from the top only so that the under collar sort of rolls under nicely, which is what we want. Um, collars have always been something, well, there's something, not that I struggle with, but I struggle to do neatly. So I definitely want to practice a bit more. Um, the checked jacket I'm going to put on the machine once this is done is going to be a lot more sort of... Well, it doesn't have a collar, but that means it needs a really nice clean edge. So I'm really going to try and work on my sort of collars and necklines. That's an, that's an aim for the rest of the year. Do some more jackets, do some more bits and pieces like that. Oh, the iron's not plugged in, that'll do I. Um, because I want to basically, I have two plugs. And today I'm using my light, my iron, my overlocker and my machine, which is 
not working super well in terms of energy well it is because they're not all plugged in at once so hooray for not using too much energy however frustrating because i have to i can't use everything simultaneously that was one thing at the big sew off actually just being able to have the luxury of having sewing machines and overlockers just plugged in the whole time was just amazing like it's obviously not something we can do at home um and it felt really nice to like yeah it's just, just just have that as an option really um so one end of my collar is a lot more rounded than the other um see what i mean like i just struggle to that it's not symmetrical but i basically round uh, do you know what i prefer the corner rounded off but now i can't stitch it because ah uh, because <sighs> i need my light because it's really rainy and dark here today so i really do need my lights um just they haven't asked me to put this in as a segment but i do use my serious light particularly this time of year um i've been working with them for a while because they're actually a local business to me and i do have a discount code so if you would like a serious light i'll i'll mark it as paid promotion because just being honest but they haven't asked me to put a segment in this video it's just i literally would not be able to sew right now without it on um so if you would like a serious light as the nights are drawing in um i've put a discount code below so you can use my code and i believe it gets you some money off the high definition light and free postage can you tell i'm not prepared for this at all um but yeah i mean share and share alike you know discount codes are always welcome right so let's give this a press it's fine it's not as neat as the other corner but it's fine because it's a pair of pajamas sometimes particularly with something like pajamas because you just want to be able to wear it you don't want to let uh, you know on a piece of clothing like a jacket for example like i'm not happy with my jessica blazer at all so it will become a toile i don't think it's wearable because it's a mess for that i'm more annoyed whereas realistically the only people going to be seeing my pajamas are me and adam and he won't notice so you know he's well he won't notice that my collars are slightly different edges like you know there's some things you've got to remember matter more to you than they do to other people right so step 4d we're on now so we've we've uh, turned it through step 4e identify your top collar from your under collar okay so my top collar is the interface one my under collar is my under collar is the non-interface one you will need to make a small clip about one centimeter on either side of your shoulder notches towards the outside between the shoulder and the airline. Now, okay. In this step, it doesn't say whether I should be cutting. It says identify your top collar from your under collar. It doesn't actually say which one I should be snipping. However, the step below says on the top collar, press the seam allowance one set one cm up to the inside neck edge between the clips you've just made so we're clipping the top collar however i don't know if i'm clipping the bottom as well or just the top looking at the drawing on the other side it's sort of oh dear so place the collar onto the right side of the shirt with top collar facing up matching the center back pin the collar under collar ensuring the top collar is out of the way between the shoulders Okay, so we're stitching on there. The top collar is stitched down, but open at the back neck. Right, okay. Oh, okay, right. So I think we're just snipping the top collar, I think. Right, so where are my lovely notches? So we have a notch here. So we need a 1cm, roughly. They're only getting roughly. Okay, so that's the shoulder. I'm just going to... The shot, you know, when sometimes you do notches, the first ones you do are less confident than the others. Okay, there we go. And also because I've interfaced it, it's closed up the notches and I need to have seen them. So there we go. Lovely. Okay. Now let's make our actual snips. Okay. That looks about a centimetre. Mm, a little more that looks about a centimeter okay nearly there oh 
Oh, holding my breath doing that. Right, okay. I think that's as close to a centimetre as we are going to get from me. Um, lovely. So, oh, sorry, that's popped up in the meantime. Uh, ah, right, okay. So, a snip has occurred, which means, I'm going to fold it up to this side so you can see what I mean. We have this on the top collar side only. On the top collar, press it up to a centimetre. Okay, no problem at all. So, I'm going to flick that up. I'm going to trim it in a minute because my interfacing is in the way and it's confusing me. Okay, lovely. Okay, so now we have our top collar. Oh my god, that's been nine minutes of me chatting about collars. Sorry, guys. So the next step is to attach the collar onto the right. Place the collar on the right side of the shirt. The top collar facing out, matching the centre back there. Okay, so we're stitching the under collar onto the shirt, then the top collar on, but we're not stitching this back folded bit. We're only stitching the side. So let me do that, and then I'll show it to you because it'll be easier. Okay, folks, hello. So please forgive any background noise. I am desperately grabbing a moment to film in between upstairs, next door, whoever it is, having new windows put in. And I've obviously, while doing that, lost my project. So here we are. Now I realised I went straight onto the collar without showing you where we were because that's quite a good, you know, estimation really of where my brain is at the moment. So here are our shorts, throw them over there. This is a facing I desperately need to iron before it goes on because yeah, again, if you can hear that in the background, I'm really, really sorry. I will stop filming as soon as the noise starts again. Um, so, with our first section, what we did is we did these seams. So we literally, front, back, top seam, underarm seam, centre back seam. So here we are. This is, this is the jacket. Now, on top of that, we now have our collar. So the collar attaches as one piece at the sides. Here we go, just turning it around. So you can see it just goes on straight as one piece. Done, sorted. We don't stitch down the middle bit yet for a reason I have not quite yet fathomed. And then, oh no, 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 I have, ignore me, I have. Then on the other side, we have these lovely facings. So I've half done this one because I just want to check something before I do it. So I think it stitches over basically and the idea is you then turn it through and get a nice clean edge see where we are so we're there this is our lovely lapel now as far as i think anyway you stitch this down and then you enclose the collar in it so that this raw edge vanishes because when we turn this through i think that's going to tuck into there so i've stitched on the first bit which is just the corner so there we are then what i think needs to happen is we're going to stitch it on right up to the collar i think i'm going to turn that around so you can see what i've done so collar open bit currently a raw edge this does seem to fit perfectly so i reckon we're stitching it up to probably to there realistically where it stops fitting and that also quite neatly covers the raw edge so that when we turn that through it will just be enclosed so i'm going to do that on both sides I'm just going to get the instructions out to see if I've missed anything important. I'm excited to have these in my wardrobe because it's a really awkward temperature at the moment. Yes, so we're stitching right the way up to there. Our top edge is finished anyway. So then the little loose edge bit I was talking about gets folded into the collar. And then we basically flip the collar underneath into the inside of the collar so it's all hidden. That's... That anyway is the aim. So let me talk through that again. So we have on this side, a raw unfinished side. So we have collar edge, show you from the inside, collar edge, collar, raw edge, flippy up bit, okay? Now, 
On this side, we have edge that has a facing on it. So what the pattern is telling us to do is flip it around again. This is an awkward garment to show you guys. Stitched on there, I followed the curve. What I need to do then is carry it on up to this section here where it's open. And I need to really stitch it into there so that when I turn it through and this bit gets folded in to cover the seam allowance, it's all just enclosed. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna do the other side, flip it, and then I'll show you where we are with it stitched down. Hopefully this is useful, guys. Bear with, um, I'd really, really like to get this top done today and then I can ping out the shorts tomorrow morning, but it has been a challenging day given the amount of noise from the windows. So please bear with. <laughs> Right, guys what we have right here is a pajama top i'm gonna to hang out the door but apologies you are gonna see quite a mess in the background it looks cute as we've got cute little lapels there's a whole bit you're meant to do with the lapel break but i don't actually seem to need to do that i think because i stitched mine slightly differently it's sort of naturally done it so our lapel is done now next steps are going to be doing the bottom of the hem so as you can see we've got a little lip here so that involves turning it up, stitching it on itself so you get a closed corner, flipping it through under the facing. So I'll talk you through that one a little bit more when I'm at the iron, but right now I need to have a little break and go and make some soup for lunch. So we're gonna do hem, sleeves, buttons and buttonholes, then we're onto the shorts. Okay guys, we're nearly there. Um, I'm not showing you me because I'm eating biscuits, watching Grey's Anatomy and sewing. It's quite late on a Friday night. I'm very much enjoying it. So what we do is for the hem, we Flick our facing back on itself. I've been careful to leave the understitch side over, like, I haven't flipped it over with it. I've, like, tucked it on the other side. On the, what would be this, be the inside of the garment. So we do that, and then we stitch along here. And then we have our nice little insteppy bit. So I'm going to go to the other side where I've already done this. This is when it's oddly hard to find. There we go. You turn it through on itself, so you end up with this nice enclosed corner, and then you fold this up. I've tucked like a centimetre underneath, pressed it down, and then you basically fold it up to wherever it sits level, which I think is about two centimetres. Pin it along, and then we'll stitch the whole thing, I would think, from here right the way along, just to secure this down. This facing is quite flappy, is the only thing, so I'm quite curious to see how this works in practice wearing it but i'll do the other side and then we just need to hem our sleeves and pop some buttons and buttonholes on so here we are pajama top pretty much done we need to hem the sleeves and pop some buttonholes on and that's completely done and then we have our shorts so obviously you guys know i accidentally cut open part of our shorts earlier which is less than ideal, but I'm hoping will become a lot less obvious once we've done the fold up and everything because there won't be as much short to move. Um, but here we are. So we have a pair of shorts constructed. Very basic. You can see my little mend in the middle. So what we're going to do with the shorts, I think, is hem them first. So they're going to come up to about, we're going to lose about an inch off the bottom, I reckon, about there. And then it's basically quite a simple elasticated waist. So fold the top down, fold it again, thread the elastic through, done. So this should be quite a speedy sew. Um, so we're gonna do that. And then I'll have a new pair of pajamas, hooray. Um, I am also, I've got an hour to do this in because I have a call at half 11 with a sewing friend of mine to talk about a different project. I would love for this to be off the books and done. But I am so tired at the moment, a little bit ill, like Adam and I are both a bit under the weather. So please bear with, I'm not talking as much because I'm very breathless and very croaky. So do bear with, um, but I'm really, really excited to show you guys this when it's done.
So here we are. Um, I've got it open just so you can see the start. Now, obviously, I skipped a couple of steps on the whole lapel section because, to be honest, as you can see, mine's falling open pretty naturally. I don't know if that is because of the type of fabric I'm using, but I didn't feel the need to do the lapel break or anything in the seam because it's just falling pretty naturally. I'm happy with how it is. So I've got it open because I want you to see the fit on the shorts, which is really nice, actually. So it's fitting on my hips. Um, and it's quite a nice, actually, if I can stumble back a bit, it's a nice length on the shorts as well. And then the fit at the top, I will button up so you can see. I think I've gone with four buttons instead of five, because I prefer a lower button just so there's lots of freedom around here if I wiggle around in the night. Um, but it's a comfortable shape. So there's about, what, what's that? About two, three inches ease on each side. And I made a smaller size than I probably should have. So it's a good fit. And then my, my arm is up here. So there's plenty of arm room. I've gone with a very simple rolled hem on the sleeve, but realistically I'll probably, when I'm walking around the house, I'll probably have my sleeves rolled up like that. And then when I'm in bed, have them down so I can keep my hands warm. Um, I will probably make the pajama bottoms that go with this pattern just because it'd be kind of fun to have, have a set for summer and winter. But I'm really, really happy with how this has turned out. So in terms of as a pattern review, I would say the pieces are nice and easy to use, good notches, some odd language on them as we discussed earlier, but you know, good. So overall, I'm happy. I'm really, really happy with the result. It's very comfy. It's big enough that it's sort of cozy but the sleeves are small enough that when I roll them up, they stay, which is what we really want. Um, so I can wear it comfortably. I love the fit of the shorts. I was really worried about this because there's nothing worse than making shorts and then them fitting very sort of snugly in the rise and the seat at the back, but these are such a good shape. And the little fix I had to do at the beginning is not in any way noticeable. So hooray. Um, so all that's left for me to say is if you enjoyed this so long, Please give it a like, maybe share with your other pals who are sewing pajamas. They make a great Christmas present, I would say. Um, and subscribe if you want to hear more from me. I don't ask you guys very often, but if you do want to subscribe, you'll hear lots from me. You can also tell me in the comments if there's videos you want to see more of, see less of, features you want me to bring back. Um, I, I will, I'm hoping anyway, towards the end of October to bring back the My Week in Sewing feature, which I love doing and haven't really been able to do since sort of lockdown. So if you would be up for that, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, just, I guess, thank you guys so much for being such a supportive community. Thank you to those of you who've bought me a cuppa over on Kofi, which is just helping me, you know, maintain this account really. Uh, so if you do feel like supporting me, there's a link in the comments below. Um, and until next time, thanks so much for watching. You're actually getting a double bill because tomorrow my reveal video for Project Dresser Girl comes out. It's a little video, it's only like 10, 15 minutes, uh, but it's my first time sewing for a child and it's all about sewing for children in extreme poverty and providing the opportunity to get a new garment, which so many of them don't have the opportunity to have. So tune in tomorrow for my reveal of Project Dresser Girl. It's such an important cause, and I hope you guys really enjoy the video. Um, until then, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.